to talk to you about the Charles cane that I purchased and is sold exclusively from Charles Double Reed Company. Now, this type of cane is grown in the French Mediterranean and is aged three years prior to being sold. For me, I went ahead and bought the two separate types, the gouged, so I could put it through my own systems, which retails for about $2.70 per piece, plus the cost of shipping. I also went ahead and bought the gouged shaped and profiled so that I could share my experiences with you and also do a little bit of a compare and contrast between the two separate types. The gouged shaped and profiled retails for $4.65 per piece, plus the cost of shipping. First off, let's talk about the gouge shaped and profiled. The gouge shaped and profiled Charles Kane doesn't really have a clear spine to it, but the other types that we've looked at, the Madeira and the Cote d'Azur, they also have not had a clearly defined spine. It fits the Rieger II shaper. Interestingly enough, on all of them that I folded over, the center line that they have for the fold over from the profile is off center. This means that when I folded over, I ended up with one side of the tube that was 29 and a quarter millimeters, and the other side was 29 and three quarters millimeters. And this happened on all three types of gouge shaped and profiled cane from Charles. Now, this has a quick fix to it. It's not that big of a deal. You can either clip off the extra end uh, so that you have a tube that is the same length on both sides, or after you finish making the reed, you can go ahead and sand it down. I like to do the sanding down method largely because uh, this is a method that is also used in the Lou Skinner book um, that I've mentioned before, and it's a great way to seal the tube. The overall profile of the reeds are basically close to a finished reed. I would take a bit off the tip, but the back is coming in in the 90s, whereas the tip is coming in in the 50s. The all-important heart measurement is a bit light for my taste. It comes in anywhere from about 55 to 62. And I do have to say that more often than not, it was coming in at the 55 um, on the gouge shaped or profiled cane. Um, so it is a little bit light at the heart. Now, because it has heavier rails and it doesn't have much taken out of the channels, it is going to be a brighter style of reed if you buy this and you don't go ahead and take the rails down a little bit or take um, a little bit out of the channels. Now, both of those I would be careful with because the heart is so light. A big disappointing factor for me in this style of gouge shaped and profiled cane is that it was inconsistent on each side. Um, when I say it's inconsistent on each side, this means that the tip closure, when you pinch it closed, um, overall the reeds would smile. So one side of the cane was harder and the other side was softer. At first I thought this was my own fault, that maybe I had cracked the tube down one side, which can create a smiling reed because it has so much more um, arch in the blade on one side than the other. But this is on cane that had cracked in the tube the same on both sides. When I tried playing um, the reeds on my Puchner bassoon, um, they are bright. They are uh, bright and buzzy, like like a bumblebee. They have a buzz to them. Um, this is a reason why I'd like to wait and see what the cane does in six months. Uh, sometimes bright or buzzy reeds or reeds that run extremely flat. Um, that's the next thing. The reeds ran uh, on the gouge shaped and profiled at least a half step flat. The cane just didn't have the strength to it. Um, the only option was to go below my regular 55 millimeter reed, uh, which I don't like doing. I like to keep the only variable to be the cane, not um, shifting the dimensions in order to make up for the cane's lack of strength. Um, but I have found that reeds that are like this, that they run flat and they just don't have the sound or tone color that I like, um, if I set them and leave them for six months to a year and then I come back to them, sometimes they have been my favorite reeds. So because of all this and I knew I wasn't going into a piece of um, cane that I really liked for just the gouge to put on my own system, um, I. I charged forward with the gouged cane and put it through my own system so I could see if the results were the same. Okay, now in all honesty, I'm not sure that this is a fair test, largely because two of the reeds that I was trying never made it to the finished process. Um, I made three of the reeds out of the gouged cane uh, using my own system of profiler and my own shaper. 
and two of them, the cane snagged. Um, it snagged when I was putting in the collar. Um, if you want to know more about how I put the collar in, uh, watch the last video in the reed making series that I did. But as I was um, pulling the cane back against that ledge, um, the outer edge of it snagged. And when I mean snagged, it snagged and it pulled. Just like, you know, you have those mozzarella cheese sticks and you can start to pull the very edge of it and yank downwards. That's what the cane did on the outer edge. Um, and it snagged to such a portion that the reed was going to leak. It wasn't something that I could just bypass and be okay with. So I was left with one reed, and I charged forward on that one reed. Um, the reed, when I first clipped the tip on it, was equally as bright and buzzy as um, the gouge shaped and profiled. Um, interestingly enough, it didn't have the flat uh, portion to it. It was not riding flat, and I think that's largely due to the fact that I had a thicker heart on it. I left the heart just a little bit heavier. Um, I didn't go down um, very much. I left it at about 70, which is heavier than usual for me on both sides um, in order to make sure that it had that warmth to the sound. But I wanted to see if I could get some of that bright buzzy out. Um, so what I did is I scraped the uh, crescent. I broke it in over a week, um, which is not easy to break in a style of cane that you're not enjoying the most the tone colors I mean half the fun is playing and enjoying your own sound and creating different colors with that sound and that that was not happening um, so I did a lot of compensating for that um, I scraped the outer tip I did a set of second triangles which I typically do um, I did them just a little bit more extreme on either side of the heart uh, to see if I could get it vibrating better um, I took the rails down very slowly to make sure that it wouldn't get any brighter and overall I was able to get some of the bright out of the sound but it is still buzzy and the overall tip closing on it um, is jagged it goes up and down um, so uh, I'll show you how the tip closes so you can get a better viewpoint of what that looks like um, that is just not a fluid motion and I think that's due to the fibers in the cane now I felt like I had to do a lot of compensating for this style of cane um, that I was you know doing everything I could to make it work you know, I felt like Tim Gunn. That was my that was my fashion moment with this read, um, and I still was being challenged by it. So, I'm interested to hear: Have you guys used this style of cane? If you have, please leave me a comment. I want to know about what your experiences are. Um, I also want to hear from you guys. Did I not give it a fair chance? Um, I'm more than willing to buy more of the cane. Um, I just. I didn't have the best experience with it, and I know that there's other cane out there that I like better, so I'm kind of gravitating towards trying that other cane that I would like better. Um, and also, this is one of those that I'd like to check back with you guys in six months to a year and say, okay, where are those reeds now, and has the cane stiffened up, and is it doing what I expect it to do, and it just needed time to age and settle into being a reed just a little bit more. So if you've worked with this cane, leave me a comment. Um, if you think I didn't give it a fair chance, let me know. I'll, I'll try some more, but I mean, this is just my thoughts and experiences from my read desk that I'm uh, going through. And like I said, if it were just me buying for myself um, and I wasn't sharing any of this, I would just move on and just not work with that style of cane. But um, yeah, wow. Didn't really want to ever have a video that was like this. I'm so much like an optimist and idealist that I'm like every cane has a place and this does have a place if you're looking for um, a buzzy reed. But I'm not sure when you would want a buzzy reed. Let me know if you know when to use a buzzy reed. Okay, if you liked this video, um, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you don't want to miss any of my other cane reviews, be sure to subscribe and leave me a comment about what you think about what I'm going through. I'd love to hear from you and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Today I'm going to be talking through my experiences, my thoughts, and even some suggestions I have for you on the Cote d'Azur cane. Now I went ahead and bought two types.